Hi, welcome back to Reading Chinese Art. My name is Brian McLean. Thank you for joining me. So where we left off, the last video, was we were talking, but just starting to talk about the 60-year sexagenary cycle in Chinese cosmology. It's used for dating. So there are two characters, two character combos, 60 different combos, and they repeat every 60 years. So this initial one, first character is Jia, second character is Zi, Jia Zi Nian, 1804, 1864, 1924, etc., every 60 years. And the first character re occurs six times in the 60 years, so every 10 years, 1804, 1814, etc. The second character occurs five times in the 60 years, so every 12 years. So Z is 1804, 1816. So between all the combos, you get 60. Now, if you see that on a scroll, and it can be a little bit hard to read because it, it, it won't be in Juan Chu like the, the seal chop characters, but it could be in, because say it's a painting where calligraphy is highly prized to go with the painting, or just in a piece of calligraphy. You might see Sao Shu or Xing Shu, the running script or grass script is very flowy and swiggly and hard to read. But if you can zero in on Nian, the character for year, as we talked about last time, and look above it, the two characters above it might be the the um, the characters for the year and for the the cyclical sixty or cyclical year. And if you know that that's what you're looking at, then it's a little easier to read those semi-squiggly characters, but it might just be written in Kaishu, which is nice and legible. And after the two characters comes Nian for year, and then after that might come a number, and after that, Yue for month, or maybe a season like winter or spring. Sometimes they'll put the season as well. So how do you know though, if you see, a, if you, okay, if you, let's say you decipher it, I know it's those two characters, Excuse me, how do you know if it's 1817 or 1877 or 750, 1757 for that matter? How would you know? Well, if you if the inscription also comes with say the name of an emperor and the and then you're set, right? If it's if it's Chenlong and it's you know Jia then it would be 1744. Okay, because that's the only one of the only Jia Zinian that falls within his reign. So it can, so it's really good, but it, you know the six-year cycle is great, but it often needs to be in. Unless there are other clues, you need another reference to date it, the name of the emperor, or better yet, even what if you have the signature of the artist? I mean, not saying it's authentic; they make fakes. But if you have the signature of the artist, real or not. And you know that you can look them up and know the years of that that artist lived, and then you see okay which one of these cyclical years would fall in his lifespan, you know not when he was a child right if it's you know eight and sixty eight he did it when he was sixty eight. So these are really useful. And that was one other thing I wanted to show, is the sixty year cycle chart. We looked a little bit about Gothenburg. We're checking out porcelain marks. We can. We'll leave the Chinese dynasties for another video, although we did talk a little bit about the Qing. We mentioned Kangxi, Yongzheng, Qianlong, Jia Qing, Dao Guang, in that order. That takes you from 1662 to 1850, pretty much the meat of the Qing dynasty, you know, the middle, the beginning in the middle. And we looked at Chinese etymology a little bit, but not too much. Okay, so if we go back to, I want to go back there. So here we are, Gothenburg. There's Nian. There's the character Nian, the fifth character. It's found in the rain marks. Da Qing Yong Zheng Nian Zhi. Da Qing Yong Zheng Nian Zhi Nian. And there's another Nian. Nian. Okay. But what does Nian look like over at Chinese etymology? Let's type it in and get the archaic versions of it. We're going to switch language kits to traditional. 
type Nian, there is no difference. Um, Nian is Nian, there's no simplified version. Okay, enter it, hit etymology. It's gonna retrieve and return Oracle characters, these are the really early ones. There's that Jia again, Jia Gu one. See that character Jia? That was one we were just talking about. It's on the cycle. It means nail, like fingernail. Gu is bone, and Wun is culture, or literacy, or writing, for that matter. Okay, so there's Nian and Kaishu. And here are some really ancient versions that I could never... Look at that. Okay, that's Nyan, I guess. It looks like Da. It looks like a dancing person. It looks like Da went, for, you know, got a little crazy. Maybe put on a... Put on some clothes or a headdress or something. Okay. Funky, right? It's like the dancing character. Okay. Here's this big thing starting to curve around. This is Nian, the character for year, in all its funky permutations. You got to keep going. Seal character, that's getting closer. Um, if I remember, though, this is more like it. That's way more like it. As far as something that looks like the seal mark, the, the fifth character, Nian, on the Chinese porcelain Zhuan Shu mark. So take a look at that. Hold that thought. Let's go to Gothenburg. See if we can get a side by side comparison. All right. So let's get a Zhuan Shu character. A Juan Shu seal mark, chop. Here we go. Pretty close. Look. Make that a little smaller. Where? Okay, here we go. Mm, pretty different. What about Yong Jung? Aha. Well, it looks a little different. I mean, it's it's it, but Chinese etymology. Do they have one that looks like this kind of spread eagle with the arms up? Spread eagle with the arms up. There's kind of. Kind of there. Uh, it doesn't have the hook thing though inside. So many permutations. Here it is. Bingo. That's pretty much it right there. It's got the little snake headed guy with his arms up into what looks like a question mark with a line through it. A little the guy's little tail thing goes down like that. That's pretty much it. But there's hundreds of versions, right? It's pretty wild. So what you'd really want to use drawn shoe for is not necessarily to take a kaishu and figure out what the drawn shoe is, but if you could do it the other way around, there's some tech that's harder, but we'll look at some techniques for how do you get, how do you trans, what, because the real translation challenge is when you see Juan Shu by itself, like on a seal scroll chop, a seal chop on a scroll, red chop, trying to figure out what those crazy Juan Shu characters on the chop are in Kaishu so you can read it. That gets tricky. But we'll look at, we'll, we'll tackle that challenge. I started to build, you know, that's something when you do translate a, Juan Shu into Kai Shu, that's something you want to keep. All right, like build a little log of that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is, well, we're going to hang out here a little bit longer, actually. 
this Chinese etymology. Okay, so we're going to say jur. Jur is an important character. It means like of. So, or it's kind of like possessive etymology, and it does show up like Shenlong's precious object. He'll still stamp it, and this jur character will be there. And the jur looks like like a little three pronged stand, a thing on a stand, like a fork with a with a stand on it to hold it up. Okay. A little fork with a stand at the base. Pretty consistent. Well, actually, there's quite a bit of variety. But there are tons of them that just, this is what you see in the Chenlong. We go searching Chenlong, Zhuan Shu, and I'm going to throw in Bao, Precious Object. A lot of the Chenlong, um, Chenlong, Bao, Jir Bao, I think is what you see. So now once you start entering Hanza into search, you're going to be getting Chinese. In fact, I'm going to take that out even. Just now you're, now you're definitely getting Chinese results. Chenlong, Jir Bao. Here it is.